Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, cool. So, <clears throat> so again, guys, I'll repeat what I just said. Um, we didn't want to trade today because of the news that was coming out, and tomorrow is going to be worse. Tomorrow is going to be crazy, um, because it's NFP. So, if I go to tomorrow, why is it doing this? Okay, there, yeah, red, 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 red. So tomorrow is just going to be a brazy day, right? We don't really want to be trading tomorrow. Okay, I would say take a walk, <laughs> even gold. It's going to be a sticky one, right? So you really don't want to be in the markets unless you're already in a trade like we are right now, okay? So let's go through the, this the trade. So that's why we didn't initially want to take this trade. Now let's go through why we took it anyway, right? So let's go through that. So here's why we took it in the end. So as you guys can see, if I move this out of the way for you guys. Uh, by the way, guys, let me know if you can hear me clearly. Can everyone, if you, can you just, I, don't, I hate doing this. Can you not drop a 222 in the chat if you can hear me clearly, <laughs> okay? Just... Um, I want to make sure that the music's not too loud and da 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 da. All right, cool, awesome. All right, cool. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, cool. So the algorithm called this trade. It hit our entry. It hit the box. We was like, cool. This is looking like a great trade. Hugo's excited. I'm excited. We're all excited. And then we said, there's news coming out. So what, as you can see, news pushed it up past our entry. This is why I said, guys, let it go. It's okay. You don't have to take every trade. Let it go. But as time went on, price came back below our, our entry that we had set up. And then we obviously sold from here. And then we made money. Then we, you know, some of us broke even and it took partials. Some of us closed our trade. Some of you are still in the trade. And currently price is retesting that area now as a ceiling. And hopefully tomorrow, it actually pushes down completely to the downside, okay? So let's go through how we set up this trade, right? So how did we pick this trade? And we're going to go through, you know, how to identify a good trade from a bad trade. um, Because I kind of want to explain to you, like, get, make sure you guys understand that Monara doesn't... Monara is one of those AIs where it works really great in a still market. Okay, it works really great in a calm market. It works really great when there's no turbulence. It just finds you what you need. You get in, you get out, boom. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't keep in mind news. It doesn't keep in mind Trump saying something and the market's flying or Elon Musk buying Twitter or something crazy happening. Now there's aliens, supposedly, right? It doesn't take into account any of that, right? All it cares about is, have I found this pattern? That's what it cares about. So because that's all it cares about, you have to use common sense. If you see, or you go on my ethics book, all of us should be on my ethics book. If we see there's red folders, so let's say, for example, there's a red folder on the Canadian dollar, and you're about to take USD CAD, you might go, hey, let's trade USD JPY. Because <laughs> you don't know what CAD news is going to do to the pair. Does that make sense? Is everyone, does that make sense? So that's why we was like a bit nervous this morning. But because price came back under our entry, we was like, cool, boom, let's sell it. So let's identify why this was a good trade. Now, write this down. The best trades for me, now I can't say for all of us, are back patterns first, First, back pattern. Second, butterfly. Even though butterf butterfly has a quote unquote higher percentage rate, back pattern. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna make that clear. Back pattern. All right, you do back pattern over butterfly. All right. Number two. Okay, the best time frames to look at. Daily, which I'm gonna explain to you in a minute. Then four hour. Then the rest of them. So thirty minute, one hour, fifteen. Right in that order, and I'm gonna to explain to you guys why. Okay. Um, and then now we're also gonna cover what the best bat and bat um pattern looks like. So this is a great bat pattern, right? Now, if you ever want to know why it's a great bat pattern, because the wings should look like a bat. <laughs> okay, it sounds obvious, but some of you send me screenshots of pat of bat patterns here that look like this. It's weird, it's like this. And then it's like, like this. And then this is all like, all up here and that. That's terrible. It's not, if it doesn't look like a bat, leave it alone. Okay. Even if it's calling it a bat pattern, leave it alone. Okay. It has to be a pattern that has a U. Okay. So I explained this on the video, but I'm going to explain it again. It makes sure that if you're looking at a bat pattern, it has a U. Okay. So boom, boom. The reason you want this, because that's what's called a wave. Does everyone see here, like the market, right? So if we just go over here, 
any trade, right? Wait. Right? Wait. Right? Wave. Right? If it's if it's all squashed, it's not good. Okay? Everyone, 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 everyone understand that? It's not good. Right? So you want to make sure there's structure. Now, the reason why I personally just been someone who's been using this longer than you guys go for higher time frames is simply this. Okay. When we are trading, okay, when we are trading, we are basically, how do I say this nicely? Guys, when you're using lower time frame, you're basically trading mid move. And I'm explaining to you what I mean by this. All right. So when you use lower time frames, you are getting involved in the market. If I can find box somewhere in this region. That's what I see. Okay. Somewhere in this region. You're getting you're getting involved. Oh, let me make sure everyone's muted for this. All right, cool. You are getting involved somewhere in this region, which is cool because there's money to be made in that region. But the better trade to take would be the high four uh, four hour daily, whatever, because you're getting in at the peak zones of the move itself. Does that make sense? So instead of you taking a trade in the middle, like and trying to work it out, can I get a buy? Can I get a buy? Can I get a sell? Can I get a sell? You're taking it at the peaks, right? You're taking it at these premium highs of the moves, right? Put it this way: if price doesn't sell here, it's not. If price doesn't sell here, it's not selling. Make sense? It's gonna sell. I mean, if price doesn't sell here, it's never buying. It's not buying again for a while. Do you get it? Because price is going to. This is a four-hour time frame. So if this is the wave, price is going to be selling this way for a little bit, at least down to here, maybe even more before it goes back up again, because it's a wave, right? But what happens is, is that you guys might get excited and it's not your fault, you're new, right? Where you might be saying, oh, I'm going to take this trade for this trade here now for a sell, right? Or even a buy, but the buy is like, it's so in between that is not the best trade that you could get. So work from the higher time frames down. And if there's no daily to set up, go for, for a while. If there's no full hour, go for one hour. But work in that way, okay? Not saying the lower time frames aren't good, but you will have more peace of mind trading the higher time frames, okay? Does everyone make sense? Does it make sense? I'm not saying only trade daily in full hour, but peace of mind. I don't know if you lot like peace of mind. Peace of mind for me means I can set my sell limit and go bed. I, and I don't have to worry. I don't have to guess. Right, and it's a good pattern, da, 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 whatever. Before I continue, is that making sense? I'm not saying just do that, but does is, is the does the, the, the does the logic make sense? Can you just type yes in the in the chat? Is my FX book just available for you? No, my FX. Okay, good question, VJ. So my FX book is a free website. Just type in my FX book on Google, or just go to your at your app store and type in my FX book. It's free. That's it has nothing to do with EA economy, right? Nothing to do with EA economy, right? All right, cool. So let's let's do this. Why? Right. Okay, you just you're gonna bug me. Move. Okay. All right, cool. So everyone said yes. Cool. So let's go over USD CAD because it's very, very important that you guys understand why you made money. Because if you don't understand why you made money, you can't replicate it. Right. So I want to show you guys why I looked at this trade like earlier, said it was good. Hugo said it was good too. Um, but I'm gonna give you my reasoning um to make sure everyone's aware. And then hopefully it makes sense. And you would also understand why now I also believe you guys can re-enter for another potential trade today, right now, right? But we're not going to tell you to do that without explaining why, right? So here we go. First of all, Manara, right? Manara is the GOAT. It called the trade. So that's that should be in your notes. Number one, did Manara call the trade? Yes or no? Yes or no? That should be, that should, as much as that sounds whatever, that should be in your notes. Did Manara call the trade? Yes or no? Tick, right? Is price... Heading towards entry or away from entry. That should be tick number two. Is price heading towards entry or away from entry? The reason why this is important is because if price is hanging away from entry, there's no point setting it up. The if price ain't going there, leave it alone. There's no need wasting your time doing all of this, all the jiggly brokery, right? However, if price is going towards your entry, then that's another tick, right? The next tick should be this. And I'm going to go through it slowly. I'm going to get the chat box up so you guys can ask questions. So please type. This is a training. So if you get stuck, obviously pay attention, please. I'm not just going to answer questions I answered two seconds ago. But if you get stuck, just say something, all right? I got the chat box up, all right? Cool. So the first thing we want to do, number three, is, is it got a U? 
Write it down. It sounds dumb, but have you got a U? Is it curvy? Is it thick? Is it curvy? Right? Is it is it got bat? Is it a bat pattern? Right? Sounds dumb. This is necessary. Right? So now you've confirmed price is going towards there. The end, you know, price is heading towards entry. All right. It's a high, it's a good time frame. Price is in the U. The bat pat the bat pattern looks like a bat. Okay. Cool. Let's confirm if the entry is saucy or not. Because again, as I explained on the video, what tends to happen sometimes with Monara, because it's an AI and because it's a robot, it edits its entry. So for example, you could we could all be on here right now, this recording, it could say 1.33663. I guarantee tomorrow, if it finds a better entry, let's say the price never hit there, it will change, right? And some people get, oh, where's, why is the, where is the U? Okay, the U is a shape, right? The U, I just mean, it has to look like a U. All right, so that's a good question. So do you see how it looks like a U? Right, that was a terrible, terrible go of it, Kieran. All right, does everyone see how it's a, it's a U shape? Right, that's what I mean by U. I don't mean there is a U actually there. I just mean it's a U shape. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, again, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Ask your question, all right? All right, cool. Now, <clears throat> We've seen that it's, 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 it's going towards entry. We're happy. Duh, 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 okay. It's a back pattern. Duh, 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 duh. All right. Two things I want to teach you guys, right? This is a bit advanced, but it's kind of basic because at the end of the day, if you've been through the academy, you should know about this. Now, Hugo uses levels of resistance, which is great. I'm going to give you a more detailed version of level of resistance, okay? Called institutional candle. It's not hard. I'm going to make it very easy for you to understand, okay? Everyone just take a screenshot because it will make sense, put it on the wall somewhere, and I guarantee it will make sense to you, right? Does everyone see, does everyone see, if I can get the thing back up, all right, cool, right here. If I, in fact, what I might do, just to give you guys a clear view, let's do it here, because sometimes the black background can confuse people, right? All right, does everyone see this? Does everyone see this candle right here, right? Right. Okay. You know what? Let's put it over here. Why are you moving laggy, guy? All right. Boom. Right. Very important. Right. Does everyone see how this was at the very top of the move? For this part, just, just engage with me for just a second, guys. Just type this. As we're going on, I'm going to say just type a number to make sure everyone understands. Does everyone see this is at the top of the move? Press 111 in the chat. Right? Just is, I just need to make sure that people are, see it. Right? That's number two. Okay. This is the next part. You're gonna, next part I need you to type. Does everyone see at the top of this that this candle? It was a green buy. It was very small. And in the cell that candle that came after it was huge. Does everyone see that? Two to two in the chat. Two to two in the chat. Right? Does everyone see that? This is called an institutional candle once you see this you will never unsee it okay the reason why this is important i'm real of course i'm not using telegram where is it uh here we go all right so it's this whole this whole thing here right does everyone see this right cool whenever you see this let me explain to you what it represents because i feel like if you understand why it's there it will help you easier to spot it this if we go down to a smaller time frame Let's go to the frame minute to explain this. Uh, all right, does everyone see? And I, this is a bit in depth, but I feel like if you guys see it, you understand. Does everyone see how there was a level of resistance here and there was a level of resistance here, right? So this was a floor. So price bounced it and used it as a floor, right? And then when it hit the top level, it used it as a ceiling and it pushed down. Does everyone see that? So floor, ceiling, ceiling, floor. Does everyone see that? It, 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 was, it was going sideways. Right now, what the banks do is that they manipulate the market. You know, when DJ Khaled says they don't want us to win, Forex market is a bunch of people that don't want you to win. Right. So, what happens is they let people make money in this area. Right. And then, what do they do? They manipulate the market. Right. And they swipe all of you out of the market. So, they swipe all these people out to so hit their stop loss. And then the bankers then sell. So, imagine, okay. 
uh, Vidge, uh, Shaik, uh, all the names I can see, right? Let's say, for example, you had to sell here. And you had to sell. You're like, yo, the level of resistance, man. I should make some money. And the banks go, oh, yeah. All right, cool. Boom. Push price up. You're not out of the market. They stole your money. They stole it. And he said, all right, now we got his money. We're going to use his money to make more money. And then they're going to sell it without you. So that candle was unnecessary. But they did it anyway to rob you. Does that make sense? Everyone, does that make sense? That's what it, that's what it stands for, right? Now, even without that explanation, let's just go through what, the, what it looks like because you don't really need to know that. I'm just giving you the, 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 the understanding for understanding's sake, right? So here, here you go. So we see this candle. We have a, a big, we have a small buy candle, which was unnecessary. And then a massive drop. So they robbed people. They took people's money. So what they're going to do is they're going to come back up to that area. And you just want to put a line underneath the, where they robbed people. Right here. Right? So this area is called now an IC candle. It's basically where they robbed people. And what they tend to do, they tend to come back later on. Come and take that money out of the market like nothing happened. And then they go, okay, now we're going to continue on our, on our, on our way. So basically, they reverse Robin Hoods. Right, they steal from the rich, they steal from the poor to give to the rich. So they will steal your money, make money with it, they come back and act like nothing happened and then continue the flow. Does that make sense? All right. So when you see this on Monara and it matches up with the entry, that's a major confirmation. Right? That's a major confirmation. So I'll show you what it looks like on Monara now. So if I was on Monara, does everyone see our Monara entry? Does everyone see our Monara entry right here? 1.33633, whatever, okay? So the first thing I would do is I would look for this candle. Is, the, is that Does that candle exist, right? Yes, it does. So I'm going to draw a white line under that candle, at the end of the body of the candle. Look how close the, the institutional candle is to our Manara entry. That's a big W. Big W. If you see that, you should be getting excited. Like, oh, this trade looks juice, right? You should be getting excited, right? Because of the Monara entry is linking up with an institutional area. I hate saying this. Put 222 in the chat if that makes sense. All right. It makes me cringe. I'm not really the the, the 222 guy. But does that is are we kind of getting again? This is a recording, so you'll see this. But is it kind of kind of making sense? I'm trying my best to say it in ways that anyone can get it. All right. If if you get lost, just say something, like don't keep quiet. Oh, that's another thing me and Hugo hate, by the way, guys. If you suffer in silence, that's on you. This is a community thing. So if you get have an ask a question, ask the question. What we hate is you had the opportunity to ask a question, decided not to, and then message me later. I beg, ask the question. Type in the chat box. I will get back to you. Okay? So please, I beg. All right? So again, we have our candle here. The second thing I want to help you guys learn, um, which is, again, not really advanced, but it's just something you should know, is that and again, this is something many people... I, okay, here's, here's how crazy it is. What I'm about to show you, I had traded three years in Forex and never knew it existed. I, I could have saved so much money, okay? There's something that you, we, we have that's free. It comes with Monara, and it's on the, on the left-hand side, and it's called um, Fibonacci Retracement, okay? Fibonacci Retracement. I will post a video in our chat explaining what Fibonacci is in the grand scheme of things, but it's a mathematical formula that is used for everything. It tells you how many disc plates you have, how many um, leaves that are on the tree, the, 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 the circular formation of a shell, uh, how many seeds a plant has. Like it has, it's, it's called the God ratio. The Fibonacci sequence is literally called the God ratio. It explains basically all of nature, right? You can also use it in Forex. <laughs> that's, that's how powerful that is. You can even use it to trade, right? So there's a there's a little indicator, right? So one, two, three is the third icon down, and it's called fib retracement. Yours now when you click this and you drag, your your one's gonna look funky. I'll be real. Your one's gonna have all of these ticks. Gonna have all of these ticks, right? It's gonna have a background. It's gonna look dead. It's gonna look confusing. All right. So these are the settings you need to have yours not look like it's spazzing out, right? Untick everything except for zero. 78.6, so 0.786, which is already there. You don't have to mess with that. Leave one, untick everything else. And if yours doesn't have 88%, add it. 
So do 0 0.88, make sure it's ticked, make it red, and then get rid of the background because the background just looks ridiculous, right? And then just press OK and it will save. It will automatically save, right? And now you have what you have this, okay? So let me guys show you the power of the 88% so you guys can see it in real time. Again, I'll go through several markets, but I want to show you real time examples. So again, I wish I knew this before, but it is what it is, right? Does everyone, so again, just like I told you, oh, I've got 10 minutes left. Okay, guys, I'm telling you in advance, if this call cuts out, I will restart the call. If you take time to get back on this call, I'm not waiting for you, okay? Respectfully, I'm not waiting for you, right? So get back, use the link, same link, we're all, we're all grown. Same link, jump back on, okay? Cool. So again, let's go. So the 88%. So it's a it's just like the IC candle that I showed you guys, right? That's just like the IC candle I showed you guys. That's one confirmation, right? Boom, IC candle. The second thing you also want to take note of is 88%. So 88% is basically a level on the market that banks consistently push price up to for premium entries, right? So they try to push price as far as they can go and then reverse. As far as they can go and then reverse. As far, okay? So I'll give an example. <laughs> Oh, that scared me. Who was that? Hey, guys, start, start meeting yourself. I'm going to have to meet everybody and not even give you the option. Not. All right, cool. So here's, here's, here's one thing, right? Does everyone see in this move that the price went down? And then what did the banks do? They rose it. They pushed it up, pushed it up, pushed it up, pushed it up. Bang. 88%. What happened after the 88%? It died. It went to hell. Right? 87% is a very, very powerful level in the market when it comes to trading Forex. I'll give you multiple examples so you guys can see it. I'll give you side, I'll give you sell examples and I'll give you buy examples, right? Now, the best time to use this is at low points or at high points. In here, it's pointless, all right? Sideways movement, forget about it, right? But let's say, for example, you're going for a buy. If we're going for a buy, you want to draw it from in the direction you're going in. So we're going to go for a buy. So we're going to draw it in a buy motion. We're going to go up, right? From the low to the high. Now, and this is a great example, but you can see it went to the 78.6, which is cool. You could have used, you could have got in at like 78.6, but the optimum place to get in is the 88%. So let's look for a better example, right? Uh, let's try this one. Might be 78.6 again, but let's see. Again, for some reason, USD CAD loves 78.6. I don't know why. It's very weird. But you can see, boom, 78.6. But let's look for another one. So this one, this one, this one was more of an 88%, right? Let's keep moving over here from the high to the low. Wow, this pair this play really loves 78.6, isn't it? All right, cool. So this isn't a great example. Let's go to another pair that actually uses the seven. For some reason, this pair loves 78.6, right? And that's why you have the 78.6 there because some currency pairs love the 78.6, but majority of them love the 88%. So let me give you another example. And I'm going to give you a buy example, as I said before, and a sell example too, right? So if we're going for a, a, a buy, we have the low, we have the high of that move. So here, and you wait for it to come down. Bow, 88%, go to the moon, right? Again, over here, low, make sure it's to go to the high of the move. Bow, 88%, go to the moon, right? And so you can use that several places. So this matched with an AI is ridiculous, right? So boom, 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 bow. Yes, it went past the 88%, but what happened afterwards? It closed above the 88%, went to the moon, right? So if we're going for a sell now, right? Some of these aren't good. Again, side sideways movements like this, not the best, I'll be real. So let's look for some actual buys that aren't like sideways. Um, just click, click, I need to click. Uh, good, you know, these examples are great. Let's go to a daily time frame. This one, this pair is jiggity jaggedy boy. All right, so let's let's try this one. High, low, nope, didn't hit. 
high, the low, boom. So it came to the eighty-eight percent. If we, you can change the high a bit, but don't get too cocky. Like it has to be a high somewhere like that. But I probably would use this one. It didn't hit the eighty-eight percent. So there's gonna be times where it doesn't quite come close. But if you can get the eighty-eight percent to match your Monaro entry, it's a great trade. Okay, seventy-eight point six, eh? But eighty-eight percent, you should be getting excited about that trade. Okay. Does this make sense? So if you're going for a sell, let's draw it out. If you're going for a sell, you want to draw it from the high to the low and draw it and drag it across, and you should get an 88%. If you want to go for a buy, so if you want to go for a buy, again, you want to draw it from the low and you want to go to the high, right? Right? So you want to go from the low, oops, no. Nope that candle there. So you're going to go from the low to the high if you're going for a buy. You want to go from the high to the low if you're going for a sell. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to give you multiple practical examples now on Monara, but does the concept of that make sense? Obviously, this forex is one of those things you learn by doing, right? But I guarantee you will, it will, it will, you'll get used to it, okay? Did that kind of make sense? Kind of. Let me know in the chat. Does that kind of make sense? Just no, yes. Because obviously this is a teaching moment. If it's not, if it doesn't make sense, then I'll try explain it a different way. All right. All right. So let's go for Monaro examples. And then guys, if it doesn't make sense, say so. All right. So let's go through today's trade. Right. So here's today's trade. This is why I called out the trade later. And I said, boom, let's get involved in it. So let's go for everything we spoke about. Right. Before this call cuts out. Is it a bat pattern? Yes. Is it on a high time frame? Yes. Do the bats look like bat wings? Yes. Is it a U shape? Yes. All of these answers or questions can be asked, asked and answered in two seconds, right? Cool. Is it going to our Monara entry? Yes. Okay, cool. So now we're going to draw our fib from the higher that moves to so the top of the wick down to the bottom. And we're going to drag across till we get to where our Monara entry is. And what do you guys see? Our Monara entry is right here, the blue line. Our institutional candle is right there, very close, and our 88% is also in the zone, right? Perfect. But now we go, okay, this is juice. This is juice. We have three confirmations that this should sell. The only reason this won't sell is because either news or God just doesn't want it to happen, right? There's, 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 that's the only two things. Because at the end of the day, we have three confirmations. We have Monara, we have our institutional candle, we have an 88%. This is a good trade. Now, do you guys see how price broke our entry, but what's it using now as a ceiling right now? Our institutional candle and our 88%. So what should everyone be doing right now while we're on the call? Do I have to tell you or do you guys kind of get the gist? Take out your phone and sell USD CAD right now. And just hold it overnight. All right, we're going to give ourselves do not do not over, do not overtrade, guys, please, because we still got NFP tomorrow. This trade could go against us. We could lose, right? But it's a great entry, so we're gonna take it anyway. So here's what I want you guys to do. I don't know everyone's account size here, so you're gonna have to work it out. But go to go to my FX book, right? Go to the app or go to your thing. Go to FX calculator, right? Go to position size. Put in what you're what you what we're doing. So we're doing USD CAD. All right, trading in dollars. I personally, I have a thousand dollars, right? I already want to risk two percent of my account. Our stop loss, we want it above this previous high, so we're gonna have it just above the previous high, which is about twenty-seven pips. So let's just make that round number, right? So let's just say three hundred, just to be safe. Boom. So that's a thirty pip stop loss, right? So we're gonna put thirty pips here, and then we're gonna press calculate. I should be using a lot size of 0 0.09, me. Now, I don't know what account size you guys have, which is why I suggest you use this website, okay? The call's about to end. I told you guys you're all grown. I am not waiting for you, right? I'm going to lock it off, click the link, join back. We're going to keep going, okay? All right, love, respect. See you guys in a sec.